Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen, but it's not just any old welcome, it's New Year's Day. Today is January the 1st, 2021, or 2020 season two, if you want to call it that. And I'm sure many of you are glad to see the back of 2020. So last night, out of sympathy, I was drinking for all of us. I had a bottle of wine to myself in curfew in Krakow in Poland, which is where I still am now. So today's video is a bit of a sit down talking video. Hopefully it won't take too long. I want to talk about what's in the thumbnail and the title, my upcoming sabbatical slash hiatus from travel and also making videos. What does that mean? So the nature of the word sabbatical is that it's an extended break with an intended return date. So I will be back 110% probably in about June, beginning of June in terms of YouTube and making videos. I will, of course, still be existing, doing other things. But in this video, I want to talk about some of the things I'm going to be doing and the reasons for this as well. I also want to go into a little bit at the end of 2020, of course. This video would not be complete without that. So let's get started. Now, this might come as a bit of a surprise for some of you, but I have been talking about this for a long, long time on Instagram. And I did actually do a video about this back in August when I was in Macedonia. I'll link it up above. It's the second half of that video, I believe. Yeah, so this is nothing new. It's something I've been planning for a while and it's something I was gonna do when I went to Mexico City. But as you know from the Mexico videos, things didn't really work out in Mexico and I ended up traveling instead, which actually I'm really glad I did because I got to go back to places like Jerez and Zacatecas. I went to the cement factory in Cruz Azul, brilliant. So yeah, that was a good thing, but now is the time to take this break. So why am I doing this? Okay. Primarily, there's really two reasons to begin with, but other ones as well, which are very much sort of logistical, administrative. Yeah, that, that, those are the good words for it. So firstly, this, my UK passport, is finally expiring in a couple of months. You can see how old it is. You can't even see anything on the front. Um, so yeah, it's time to renew that. And the only ways I can renew a UK passport is by actually going in person to a passport office in the UK or by applying online, which I've done, and then they can send the new one to here in Poland. Um, for those of you like in the US, I know you can go to an embassy. Sorry, there's a noise in the background in my bathroom. I know you can go to an embassy and renew it there. That's not possible with a UK passport. As far as I know, like, I've checked everywhere over the years and the only ways you can do it is online or in person. Anyway, that's the first one. So that's obviously gonna take a bit of time to do. Secondly, as I mentioned in one of the Latvia videos, I am in the process, or I have been in the process since September when I was in Toluca, I think, of obtaining Polish citizenship by descent. So my grandparents are Polish, which means that I am eligible to have a Polish passport to be a Polish citizen as a dual citizenship with the UK. And um, apparently due to the rule of blood, I'm already a Polish citizen because I have half Polish blood, if you know what I mean. But the whole process of citizenship and passport is just sort of legalizing that with a rubber stamp, you know. And I'll be honest with you, the only reason I'm doing it is because of Brexit. So today, January the 1st, is the end of the transition date. So the UK has officially completely 100% left the EU now, meaning that I can only spend 90 days in the EU in terms of traveling, working, living in the EU. I'm restricted now. So by having a Polish passport later this year, hopefully, um, that will no longer be an issue and I will have more options open to me. So those are the first two things. The, the other things are the fact that I'm bloody exhausted. <laughs> I've been doing this for over four years now. And yes, I've taken little breaks of like a month here and there, but honestly, I just need to have a break. And, and the break is all about doing other things. So as you know, I, I, I don't just make videos. I do a lot of other things. Making videos is quite a small part of what I do. And there are things I've been wanting to focus on for a long time, even though I've done a lot last year in terms of setting up a website and um, what else have I done? Written eBooks, you name it. There are still other things I wanna do. So let me move over slightly. There we go. And I'll put there um, some things that I actually posted on Instagram stories the other day, things that I'm planning to do. Um, so setting up an English, teaching English Instagram page, primarily, you know, it's a bit of fun, but also, to market myself, you know, with teaching, very few of my lesson requests come from my talkie these days. I still use it, but not very much. Most of them come directly through my website, or actually I get a lot through travel YouTube videos, weirdly, um, and also word of mouth. So, you know, existing students will recommend their friends, partners, family members, colleagues, whatever. But, you know, Instagram is another way of marketing myself. And, and like I said, it's a bit of fun. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time. 
Um, I'll link everything down in the description below. The second one is photography. You know, I want to, well, I've already done it. I've set up an Instagram page for um, photography. Terra incognita, uh, that means unknown lands in Latin. So it's very much, it very much goes with my thing of, you know, going to lesser known places. See what I did there? I'm not just an ugly face. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so photography, uh, teaching, Instagram page. I want to do more writing. I said in the Macedonia video that I want to, you know, write some, um, write natural, like, kind of like an autobiography. I might do like a script writing course, things like that. I want to play the oboe. You know, I, that's one of my natural talents, music. I played the clarinet for years and, um, yeah, it's just a hobby. It's something I want to do. Because the thing is, you know, as a digital nomad, you, you kind of think that everything you do needs to be relating to making money. But that's not the case. And that's something I want to kind of explore in 2021 is just doing other things for the fun of it, you know? Yeah, there are many things I'm going to be doing, um, but those are kind of the, the key ones that I'm going to be focusing on, as well as my website, getting back to writing blog posts, writing, 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 photography, you know, and, and trips that I do. Yeah, I'll be still be traveling. I'll go to places in Poland, um, but they'll just be photography and writing. You know, it'll be great to actually go somewhere and and look at things with, you know, the things that God gave me and, you know, memory um, instead of looking through a camera. Because it really kind of, um, I've said it before, it kind of, sort of hampers your experience. I, I think many people that make YouTube videos, they really miss out, including me, on, you know, actually experiencing a place because you're so worried about bloody filming all the time. I'm going to move over here now again because I don't need to be on that side. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, just having a bit of a break and, you know, the creativity thing as well. You know, you've got to remember that as any creative person, singers, artists, film stars, whatever, you know, musicians, they, they don't just continuously do everything. They take breaks for their creative benefit, you know, and there is kind of this unwritten expectation of a YouTube channel that you must continue forever and you're answerable to subscribers, but it's unhealthy, it's toxic. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of um, channels, travel channels during December last month doing Vlogmas, you know, and there's videos every day, every day, every day, and that's just exhausting. Hats off to anyone that can do that, that's brilliant, but um, it's not something I would wanna do, and it's, you know, it's really toxic. You know, I, I, I reached 20,000 subscribers the other week, and I didn't even know. <laughs> one of my patrons told me um, because, you know, I think the toxicity of chasing a number, you know, is really unhealthy. You know, I, maybe it's my age. I don't understand this thing about why views like subscribers are so important. It's just bizarre. I, I think it's quite concerning that people celebrate, you know, these, I've got a million subscribers. Great. Why do you need that? It's a bit, it's a bit concerning. Anyway, on to 2020, this is the last bit. There were really two decisions I made this year, which meant that 2020 was brilliant. I had a great year. Firstly, you know, if you had a great year in 2020, don't be ashamed of saying so. If you've achieved things, that's brilliant, you know? We shouldn't be, be feeling like, you know, just because everyone's had a bad year, I've had a good year, that I can't say that. Say it. Let me know down in the comments which things you've achieved this year that you're really proud of because they take hard work and ambition and perseverance. You smashed it. Yeah, the two decisions I made back in March when I was stuck in Sweden, I decided to um, not listen to the pressure, people talking at me saying, go back to the UK, it's the sensible thing to do. Why? Look at the UK now, it's a disaster zone. Instead, I went to Belarus, an affordable country for me, which meant I could really just work my ass off for a few months and set on my website, you name it. And I very much now, probably for the first time since I've been a digital nomad slash semi-nomad, which was kind of another um, decision I made as well, I'm financially stable for the first time in God knows how long. My battery is going, so hang on a minute. Right, we're sorted. Yeah, so going to Belarus and continu continuing traveling in general, despite the fact everything was closed and it was very difficult to, you know, film videos when everything was closed. That's another reason kind of why I'm taking a break as well. I want to come back, you know, when things are possibly open. We'll see what happens. Yeah, doing that was a good decision for me. Um, the other thing, and I appreciate the irony of me saying this and the irony of you watching this on YouTube, but... Back in March again, I decided to take a step away from YouTube and I'm not a YouTuber anymore. <laughs> I've mentioned this before. You know, I, I mentioned about the people that I would take my hats off to, people that see YouTube as a business, people that make videos 
about things that YouTube kind of tell you to do videos about, that your subscribers want, that you see trending, controversial topics, you name it. I've done it. I've been there. I've eaten the tacos con chorizo. You know, I've sat there talking for 10 minutes about something controversial because I knew it was going to get views. And taking that step away and actually making videos that I want to do, going to places that I actually want to go to, shockingly, like a cement factory. I didn't really want to go there. You know, I enjoy it. I get more fulfillment out of it. And um, the way I see video creation is the word creation. YouTube is not about creativity. Um, it's about doing what YouTube tells you to make money. And it's just not what I want to do. And I can say now, after making all these videos this year, which by the way, are the ones I'm the most proud of, particularly the Mexico series and the Latvia and Estonia ones. I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, bollocks. That's it, that I, that I actually enjoy making videos again, which is why, going back to what I said at the beginning, I will be back because it's something I absolutely enjoy. And I understand that YouTube, as much as I have a slightly negative relationship with it, it's kind of the core of what I do. Everything else kind of grows from outside, from out that, oh, I can't speak. And yeah, and, and the videos this year might not have 250,000 views like my sex shop video does, or, you know, 70 something thousand like San Luis videos do, but it's not important, you know, for fulfillment, your own personal fulfillment and doing what you want to do instead of worrying about what everyone else wants you to do has been a game changer. So um, those, that was my 2020. That's what I'm doing coming up. There will be one more video before we go. One more travel video from Krakow. There's an interesting place, which is very me, um, that I'm going to be going to tomorrow. And that video will be up in a couple of days. So uh, thanks for watching, but not just thanks for watching. Thank you for everyone, to everyone that watched videos in 2020, that left comments, that kept me sane on Instagram, that joined Patreon, that had English lessons, you know, all of those things that you do are things that have kept me going, ultimately. It's not just what I do, it's what you do as well. So thank you very much. And I hope you've had a wonderful 2020 evening. I didn't, to be honest. <laughs> and I hope you have an awesome 2021. So I'll see you next time. We'll be outside in the cold, not in this t-shirt for once. It's my favorite t-shirt though, I love it. Um, and I'll see you next time, catch you later.